All right. I created a emergency action plan for my house because I don't have one and that would be useful to have. I started off first by doing this. I, I drew a quick diagram of all my exits and, um, you know, a first, second, basically a three routes for every room um, and two meeting points um, just in case. And uh, that would probably be posted, you know, like on a refrigerator or um, maybe in another spot as well, like in the living room or on a wall somewhere. And then um, first and foremost, we would make sure that everybody has everyone's emergency contact information and, you know, having a neighbor, I think would be helpful as well. Um, someone out of town, just in case, you know, you never know when that you might need that. And um, ensuring that numbers for fire, police and hospital are, shown in um, people know where to find them they're very clear to see and then going from there we would um, actually we would develop the evacuation plan which I pretty much did here with the roots and this would be visible like I said at multiple points having a primary secondary and even a, I guess a tertiary exit if possible and then one or two meeting points um, for family or roommates, just, you know, because just like we did a fire drill in high school. Um, and then next we would have, um, we would make sure we had a proper alert system in place. Um, whereas, you know, whether it be radios, I think we would, uh, it'd be a good plan to have a couple, maybe a few uh radios because you never know when communications could be shut off or you know powers out and you need some old school communication um smartphones obviously um and i put a flashlight here um and also i, I put this doesn't really apply to me but say if you had a deaf person that you lived with i think it would be very important that you have some sort of alert system that is visual, like, you know, how fire alarms have that really bright light, you know, um, and, and then from there, we would, um, make sure we have a communication system in place where everybody has every, everyone's contact information and they know exactly where it is at all times and they know where all the radios are and, then they all have contact with the central contact that is, say, out of town. Like, you know, a friend that's a city over or something. Um, and then next, I would create an um, emergency kit, which would include first aid, a flashlight, batteries, um, let's see, medications, um, safe drinking water, bottled water. Um, I think non-perishables would probably be a good idea because, um, I mean, I've been in this situation. I don't know if anyone, my classmates might not remember, but when we had a bad windstorm and the power went out years ago um, and we didn't have power for, I think, a week um, or like water, you know, that, that was really demonstrated how this would be important. Um, and then from there, we would... Um, we would make sure everyone knows how to shut off all utilities. If you have gas, you know, some people have gas or electric, um, water. Um, everyone should know how to properly turn them on safely and turn them off safely. And, um, and then obviously next year we would evaluate fire safety in case of a fire. We would um, ID all fire hazards in the house, which, you know, for us would be pretty much the kitchen um, bathroom, bedroom, if you have candles, living room, if you have candles, um, or any electrical outlets, um, things of that nature. Um, and also the most important thing is working smoke detectors that are charged with batteries and working. You want to make sure those are tested as often as possible as well, because you do not want to run into that. Um, 
I would also add that it would probably be a good idea to have carbon monoxide alarms as well under that because you can't smell that and I know that's caused a lot of problems for people. Um, you get a leak and you know, everyone dies. So that's very important. So we would have a fire escape routes, which we do have here and meet points. Um, so everybody would be aware of that and this would be posted um, in a couple spots in the home or we should now. <laughs> um, and then we would have a plan for severe weather. What happens in a tornado? And so in a tornado, we would go to the bathroom because we don't have a basement and hunker down and um, and save if, if there was earthquakes here, you know, a sturdy table and where you are and not in a position to be hit by any large or heavy objects um and then from there i established a first aid and medical um which would include a first aid kit um medications it would have um you know uh, pretty much if anyone in the in the household has medical conditions these would be listed here um this would probably be more so once you have children and stuff, um, and young ones, um, or not. I mean, you know, some people that are older do have medical conditions that need to be made aware of here. And if that is the case, then everybody in the house, um, should be aware and know of all of these. And then another, um, thing we would have to evaluate would be security, um, whether it be intruders, um, you know, making sure all your locks are properly, you know, functioning, they're locked, um, windows are shut, you know, locked, um, motion detected lights, um, and, you know, I get at the same time, if, you know, if you have firearms, um, you would want everyone in the house to have access to those, but also be trained and know exactly how to operate those, um, you want to be prepared 100%. So, um, what we got next here? Um, so then next, we, any hazardous, this is also probably more important once you have children, but any hazardous chemicals or materials that are in the house would have to be labeled and put in a safe spot to where they can't be, you know, childproof, um, you know, how to, everyone would have to be aware of how to clean up chemical spills and um, how to respond if they are exposed, you know, um, because you don't want to get in a situation where you're exposed and you, you can't. Um, and then pretty much after that, it comes down to home inventory. You would, you know, we would have... Um, and this is probably more so when you're older, but all your important financial documents, um, let's see, uh, legal documents in a safe, all together in a safe, accessible place. Um, you would want to have an inventory of all your valuables at the same, um, you know, in the same area. Um, and then... I think it would be important to have an alternate um, place identified if your home becomes un uninhabitable. You know, if you have a flood or something and you, you know can't live there, you should have a plan in place so you're not stranded. Um, and then I think lastly, it comes down to, you know, you want to have, um, say, create little wallet size cards that everyone has with all the proper emergency contact information. Um, and, uh, you know, even to have like neighbors and their contact information, um, community, local resources, like a shelter and things of that nature. Um, and then lastly, I think the most important thing would to be to regularly review and evaluate the plan. Um, you would want to practice it probably a couple times a year. Um, 
and just make sure everything's always functioning so you're always ready.